Con. <laughs> Welcome to the panel for the Amazon original animated series, The Legend of Vox Machina. We are so excited to be here today with the executive producers, the cast of Critical Role. We have some amazing surprises lined up for you today. And before we start, I would like to shout out to the critters watching and give a big welcome to everyone joining that is new to Critical Role and the legend of Vox Machina. Vox Machina. Vox Machina. <laughs> so for those of you who are new, Critical Role is a group of veteran voice actors who started out as friends playing an RPG around a living room table, who then went on to create epic stories live streamed to the entire world. That gang launched a crowdfunding campaign for an animated special based on the characters and adventures of their first live stream campaign. And thanks to you, it became the most funded film and video project in Kickstarter history. <laughs> yeah, 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 give it up. And now we get a whole two seasons produced by Amazon Studios. Okay, so now that you are up to speed, let's introduce them, the cast of Critical Role. <laughs> Hey gang, what is The Legend of Vox Machina? Oh, uh, the, the Legend of Vox Machina is an animated high fantasy tale of a group of kind of ragtag up and coming adventurers, heroes that try to find their way in the world and in doing so get pulled into intrigue, into drama, into uh, major action packed you know, conflict and battles while also being just a, a bunch of ridiculous uh, silly people in the process. I, uh, hype, it, man, hype man Matt is my, my favorite Matt. <laughs> 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 that was really good. No, thank you. <laughs> sure it but yeah, it's 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 a it's just a it's a lot. It's really great. It is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> so tell me about your characters, oh, Matt. Who do you play? Why am I in this spot? Okay. Uh, <laughs> hi. Pa I, apparently, it starts with me. Hi, I'm Matthew Mercer. Uh, hi, I voice Silas. <laughs> Silas Briarwood, this pale fellow over here who is uh, an antagonistic force throughout uh, the, the campaign uh, of season one, and he, uh, as well as many other characters throughout Alexandria, I'm, I'm scattered everywhere. Woo! <laughs> That's everywhere! Oh uh, you did so good, Matt. Thank you, yeah. thank you. Travis? Yeah, Travis, over. my turn. Now. <laughs> here we go. Uh, hello, my name is Travis Willingham. <laughs> I play Grog Strongjaw. He is a ragey, half giant with a heart of gold, but he uh, he's not so quick upstairs. No, he's yeah, not. He's not, but he's he loves uh, shiny things. Truth. He is a big heart. <laughs> big heart in that boy. Samuel. We love a himbo. I know, thank you. What uh, about you? Hi, uh, on The Legend of Vox Machina, the show that we're talking about, I play Scanlan Shor. Oh, my name's Sam Regal. Oh my God. Uh, <laughs> uh, I play Scanlan Shorthalt, this, uh, this lovable. Other side. Uh, yeah. yeah. Okay, like this? <laughs> Like this? Uh -huh. uh, he is a he is a a, a, a a musical magical maestro of mischief. He is uh, he's a little raunchy. He's a he's a little dirty. He's a little nasty. He's most of all he's just little. He's just a little guy. A little just, yeah. Yeah. We love a nasty <laughs> little man. Yep. How about you? Marisha? We made it through three. Let's go four. Yeah. yeah, four for four. Here we go. I'm not gonna mess this up. It can't be done. My name is Marisha Ray, and I play Keyleth. She's over there of the Arashari, who's an awkward, but adorable, lovable, wielder of nature magic, and uh, she's just trying to find her place in the world, you know? Oh, really yeah, yeah. yeah. Nicely done. Thank you. <laughs> okay, maybe not that good. Jeez, yeah, set me up for failure. Uh, hi there, <laughs> my name is Liam O'Brien, and I play Vaxil Don. I am our uh, rakish and charming B&E expert, Breaking Ennery. Uh, and I'm one half of this show's uh, Wonder Twin set, uh, which is paired up with this lovely actress right here. <laughs> <laughs> Speaking of which. Oh, dude, I should just oh, go yes. straight into it then. Huh? Set you up, spike it. Hi, hello everyone. I'm Laura Bailey. <laughs> Harp noise, harp oh, noise. Yeah. Hi, I play Vexalia. Other side, yep. Yeah, Vexalia. <laughs> She's half elven. She's an archer. She's hot. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. That's yeah, right. that's really that's, that's really all you need. Kind of Let's be there's, honest. There's more to her, but you have to watch yeah, the show to see. That's it. right. <laughs> She's mysterious. Yes, she <laughs> and to you, immortal one. Uh, hello, my name is Taliesin Jaffe, and I play uh, Percy DeRolo, who is a uh, aristocrat in exile, who also invented this world's 
uh, first firearm and is mysterious with a dark past. Ooh. Ooh. Wow. Wow. Top wow. See the man. Yeah, there we are. And That's also how you do hot. It. Yeah. And, and also, also and also hot. I mean, baseline, yeah. everybody's hot. Yeah, yeah. yeah. pretty hot. <laughs> pretty hot. Oh, <laughs> oh, hi, you. <laughs> there you are. Oh, oh, hey. My name is Ashley Johnson. Yeah. yeah. And I, oh, no, no, this way. I'm playing um, Pike Trickfoot, who is the uh, group's sort of mama bear. She's mm -hmm. the group's healer. Mm -hmm. She cares for everybody. Her best buddies is Grog. Stone job. Stone job. <laughs> There's no it was a joke. Thing. It was a joke. Oh, come Frog on. Stone job. Six years. It was a joke for some of those of you who may know. Yes. Hey, we well did it. We did it. Oh goodness. Oh, the energy on this panel is absolutely feral. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> So the first two episodes of The Legends of Vox Machina are not taken from live stream campaigned material. Why, do, how, what, why? Why? <laughs> where, is it, where did that come from? Well, we, uh, we wanted to, uh, to set uh, the entire audience uh, off on the same foot, right? So you don't have to know what Critical Role is or have ever seen us play an RPG game to just jump right into the series. Uh, and start to meet these characters and explore the world. So the first uh, two episodes sort of set up the world and the, and, and the, and the characters and the intrigue and, the, and the, the hijinks that they're going to uh, encounter in this season. But it also sort of sets up um, uh, the, the whole season. Like we'll, we'll meet some of the, the dark villains that will, that will be uh, posing more of a threat to us uh, yeah. in the whole and, season. And what's cool about it is these two episodes, while they weren't on the live stream, they are part of the overall Legend of Vox Machina. They are based on when we had this as a home game before we started streaming. So while they are new to the audience, they are very much in canon with the the history of these characters. What was it like going back to the origins like so long ago? How long, how long ago is that? Like no. eight, eight years, years ago? Eight yeah. No, I think it was more uh, than 2013, that. 2013, 2012, I think. Uh, oh, I know yeah. we keep saying oh, eight wow. years and time moves on. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. And then we don't adjust. Yeah. It's been eight so. years for about 20 of those <laughs> yeah. years. Yeah, yeah you're not wrong. Right. It's I mean, been pretty like, crazy because even just the live stream show, you know, there were over 400 hours of content just in that first campaign. So we knew with 12 episodes in the first season, we had to compress everything down to just over five hours, right? So you know there are going to be trims. There are going to be things that are streamlined. There's things that we'll have a chance to improve or, or make better. But, you know, ultimately it's been amazing just going back and seeing all the characters, revisiting all these moments and hitting the things that we loved, but also that we know are so near and dear to the critters' hearts as well. That was one of the coolest things is knowing, you know, like, everybody got to say what was most important to them within the campaign and the mm -hmm. moments that really stuck out to them. And we made sure to, like, incorporate those into the show. And then the first arc is the Briarwood arc, which is like very, very popular fan favorite. But was that sort of something that was on everybody's list of, of like, oh, we really want this? Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, yeah. It's yeah. hard to start anywhere else. Yeah. It feels yeah. like the, it was just the obvious point. jumping off point. Yeah, yeah, I mean, we had been playing um, this RPG uh, with each other at, at each other's homes. And then, of course, as we broadcast it um, on our live stream show, but I think for all of us, like when we got to the Briarwood arc of telling the story, the story of Vox Machina, that was the first time that it sort of like clicked for all of us that like, this isn't just a game. We're not just goofing with each other anymore. We're telling a real story here. And it's, I think it's for like, for me, it's the first time that it ever kind of felt like art. Like just like a little, like yeah, a, yeah. A, I'm not I saying that we, that we make art all the time, but like that's the first time that I really was like, oh my God, we're, we're making something by playing with each other that is special and, and could be art. And, yeah. and we do make art. We also tell yeah. really, really stupid jokes yeah. all yeah. the time. Yeah. Yeah. Scattered amongst it are little gems. But yeah. the Briarwood arc was also like the first time when we were all playing together that I think our relationship started to grow with each other as characters and, and everything got more intertwined and deeper. And I think that shows in the, in the show as well. I, th I, th I think it was, it, it, the narrative for the Briarwood arc was where we began to make jokes about how cinematic it felt in our imaginations, and we're, and we're being like, man, this would this would be really great as an animated series. That'll never happen. <laughs> uh, well, here we are, and it's been a really exciting process to take those visions and those those moments and and see them realized to such an incredible, mind blowing degree. And uh, we we just can't believe we're here. I it, I have gotten a little sneak peek, a little, and it is 
gorgeous. The style is gorgeous. Can you tell me a little bit about, you know, that and going with that animation studio and why you decided to make it like a hard R, you know, not oh, for kids. Yeah. Well, I mean, you know, for us, like the, sh the show that we that we tell every week is an adult show, right? There's language, there's sexual situations, there's, you know, <gasps> I know it's true. It happens. Um, but, you know, it's it's important for us to tell a story that's similar in the way to what we started with. And so for us, there were a lot of different ways we could have approached the show. We could have done something zany. We could have done, you know, uh, different animation styles that you see these days. But for us, you know, we had talked about it conceptually. Like we're, we're kids of the 80s, right? So we have like a, a closeness to a certain tile, uh, style of storytelling that was that was adapted back then. So, you know, we found the amazing Phil Barassa to come in. He designed all of our characters. And once we saw that, we knew we had like set the path, right? We knew we knew what we wanted the show to look like and what we wanted it to, to feature in that way. And we, we are... Uh, kids of the '80s, most of us, um, but we Thank also you. we also You're are we, we have deep roots uh, uh, in like anime style uh, stuff too. So you'll see that the the art style of our show is heavily influenced by Japanese animation and stuff. And and the the team at Titmouse uh, is so good at that. Um, they're all heavily in, influenced by anime stuff too. So um, they were the perfect studio to go to. They're kind of like a they're they're punk rock when they want to be, but they're also super artsy fartsy when they want to be, oh, yeah. and and it's a it's a really great melange of artistic. We styles. all watch a crap load of anime. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Nice. As far as like fantasy as a genre goes, it's kind of a very standard expectation of what fantasy can do, and our story definitely bends those expectations. And Titmouse has been able to take that ball and run with it, and really kind of show the breadth of what can be done within fantasy in ways that. I mean, we certainly hoped we could do, but nobody, I think, is really able to expect. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I think that there are certain perceptions around both fantasy and then the idea of cartoons in the West that, like, in we're all used to anime, we're all used to sort of more adult storylines and really complex interpersonal relationships, but, like, bringing that into... Did you guys get, like... Were you guys just given free reign to do that? <laughs> a little bit. I mean, the great thing about Amazon Studios is they recognized from the Kickstarter and from our from our fans that you know there was there was definitely a way to do the show, and then things that you know probably wouldn't have probably wouldn't have worked as well. So they relied on us heavily to inform them of like what 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 are the stories we want to tell and how do we want to do it. And the great part about the cast all being executive producers is. We get to we get to know the most about each individual character. Percy's, you know, character, Talison's backstories are just sick and twisted and Thank insane. You. And you get to have <laughs> Ashley and Liam and everybody comes in and has input over everything that we're doing. So, you know, for the for the critters and for the people that supported the show and wanted to make sure that it was our show, it is. It is in every sense of the word. Yeah. That is something special and unique because for years you've all voiced other people's characters, written by other people. Uh, you, in some ways, you just you're a Ronin and you like you're in, you're out. Yeah, yeah. Um, you Hired have a part sword. of the story, but what is it like? Actually, this is your story that you own. You created these characters, and now you're adapting them for something complex like an animated show. What's that like? Ashley, let's start with you. <laughs> <laughs> um, it's incredible. I mean, it's, it's something that I think all of us, um, yeah, we've, we've always been the, the hired sword of you come in, you do your job, and this feels so different, and we're all so passionate about this project and the story that we've all collaboratively told together for Eight years. <laughs> yeah. yeah. <laughs> Asterix, eight years. <laughs> yeah. But you know, it's 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 really special. Like it's it's none of us at any point in this process have taken it for granted. And every day we're like, I, well, I can't believe this is happening. But at the same time, we're very um, we're so proud of this story that we've told together, and we're we're so excited to be able to take it into another medium, and. It's cool. <laughs> I don't know. It is. Yeah. Yeah. Hell yeah. You did think, great. Yeah. I, think, <laughs> I think we've all loved a lot of the projects that we've worked. I love bringing people's robots and heroes and villains to life, but there's, you just can't really beat digging your fingers into the, your own character. And uh, At least I feel more invested in, than I've been in anything I've ever been a part of. And we get to do it with our best friends. And we get to mm -hmm. do it every day. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I know it is interesting because 
I think if you would tell most people that this show has eight executive producers, they'd be like, how does that work? How, how is that not just a mess all the time? I think because we all have such a, a very clear vision of what we wanted to make and we're all pretty aligned on that vision that, I mean, it just makes the whole project that much stronger. It's like a giant robot coming together to, to uh -huh. find it yeah. out. Yeah. And, and we got to work with the best in the industry. Like we have yeah. Brandon Amon as our showrunner, <laughs> who's amazing. Chris Pronosky over at Tip Mouse, and you know we just we just Arthur yeah. Loftus. Arthur, yeah, yeah. <laughs> we brought a, a lot, a lot of, of the people. a lot of the artists. Um, uh, if they weren't fans of Critical Role before, have become fans of Critical Role now. And um, I think what Ashley was saying before too uh, really uh, is meaningful. Like our, we, we bring a passion to the project that. I think has sort of spread throughout the crew um, and the staff of the show, and so now it, it feels like everybody's uh, treating this like it's their baby, like it's their show, and yeah. so there's a lot of love in it. I'll sure. still, I'll still never forget going in. You know, all of us have been with each other in different recording booths on different projects through the years. It's how we met. It's how we became friends originally. But the first day we all went in together in one booth to record the first episode of this series yeah. as a family was. I, I will remember that to the it end of my surreal. days. It was surreal. It was magic. Yeah. Yeah. Was yeah. Magic. Mm. yeah. I mean, I, I guess we could actually give the people a little sample. Oh, a little something, something. A little something of how the magic is made. Okay, you know? okay. Sure. How would we do that? With a transition? Oh my goodness. With. Jump, 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 <laughs> Rog wins again. Ah, oh, fuck me. Why do we always play drinking games with a guy twice our size? Because it's the fastest way to get drunk, obviously. Zeus <laughs> drunk. Not me. I'm great. I think we should go to another. Get another. <laughs> Didn't you only have one ale? <laughs> <laughs> oh, so chunky. Oh, watch it, bitch. Hey, you watch it, dick nose! Easy, Grog. We don't waste our time on talking assholes, remember? Mm. Oi, Tavern Keep! Another round for Vox Machina, the greatest band of mercenaries in all the realm. <laughs> the greatest? I heard you couldn't even rescue a cow from a burning barn. <laughs> Vox Machina, what a fucking joke! <laughs> <laughs> Let's keep things civil, friend. We're not looking for trouble. I'll bet you ain't. <laughs> Everyone knows you're a bunch of pathetic losers who can't get a fucking job. Look at your scrawny ass. Too weak to tickle your own pickle. You offering to help? Yeah. Uh, no, I... Uh, fuck you! I'm only asking you to give me a hand. <laughs> you know, Max, I take his willing. Oh, can I keep this? Uh, don't just stand there, cock and lungs! Kill him! <laughs> that was fun. Hey, might might I ask a question, Erica? Yeah. Sam! Why was the clip selected? Uh, why did it not have my character Scanlan in it at oh, all? Oh, don't you worry, Sam. I got you. Oh, really? That's right. Okay. Roll it! Mama! <laughs> yeah, there you go. Hey. Okay. Awesome. All right, that's there about all. I, that's, I think all that the audience could stomach of him. So yeah, that's, that's good. That's good. Fair. That's like good a solid Fair. second. Yeah, that's like an offer. <laughs> Just like Scanlan. Uh -huh. <laughs> oh. It's so great. There is even even dubbing. You guys are great at dubbing, by the way. Hey. Hey. Yeah. 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 yeah, yeah. You can. I bet you can have a lot of really good impressions. Oh boy. Yeah. <laughs> Uh, that's, <laughs> that's cruel. That's so inside uh, baseball. <laughs> yeah. um, there, there's such a kinetic energy to it, recording together, and you got to do it for some of the show. What was that like? Were, were there things that came out in the room? Uh, yeah, it was amazing. Uh, uh, we, when we all got together and, and recorded the first episode of the show, like Travis was saying before, like uh, there was there was a magic in the room. It was palpable because when we started this whole adventure, this whole journey together of storytelling and, and playing role-playing games together, that's how we, we started, together in a room with just our friends, making each other laugh and cracking each other up and stuff. 
And that's what it was like to step back into the recording studio um, and record our show that we created with our characters and our world. Um, we did it together and we cracked each other up and, and it, was, uh, it was a magical time. And uh, yeah, it was one of the highlights of, of doing this. There was right? also that like sense of looking around at each other and going, this is, this is real? Yeah. This is, yeah. This yeah. is yeah. real? We're okay. not getting pranked. Was yeah. Yeah. Out. yeah. It was also like we would record it and we would record one take as it was written on the page and then we would get another take of just like ad-libbing of what it felt like in the moment because so much of what we do is based mm. on improv anyway. So mm. we would do a take just with what we felt like we wanted to say. Mm -hmm. And when you think about it, all we really did was take the table away. Yeah, yeah. that's mm -hmm. true. Yeah. That's interesting. So a lot of it was that sort of off-the-cuff improv feel of the show. Was, I don't know if you're allowed to say, is there anything that was ad-libbed that, that you got into that you're like, we can't use that? Oh, oh, oh there's so <laughs> many. Oh, what yeah. will you tell me, like, your oh, friend boy, yeah. Erica? Half of the oh, things later. that we said. <laughs> yeah. Like, one out of every two things we could use. You just, you just say it and go, no, oh, no, no, no. no. Oh, yeah, I feel like we could make from? an entire second series. I mean, plus, we recorded a lot of the show together, and then the pandemic hit, and then we went to remote recording. So we were all in our individual houses and, and in our closets with, you know, blankets up and everything like that. And, you know, it allowed us the opportunity to go back and refine it as much as we wanted to. But also, you could send in pretty much whatever you wanted to, and it would be up to the audio, audio engineers or voice directors to, like, weed through and go, oh, God, oh, God, <laughs> until they found exactly yeah. what they wanted. Wanted, so yeah, improvising in a void in your closet is not doesn't have quite <laughs> as much life to it. But but you know we 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 got we got great stuff. Yeah. It's awesome. We have fun. Yeah, <laughs> we have a good time. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so um, what was did you land on the tone of the show sort of very early on, or did it kind of come out as you were writing it, as you were recording it? The idea of the the fantasy and comedy. Yeah, it was something that it took a while for us to talk about because we had to, we sort of had to have the adult conversation of what what is this show actually to us? What's really important? And it was hard trying to sort of split the line of we have serious moments that really make people feel. We have hilarious comedy that's obviously just off the walls, right? And then there's also fantastical worlds that that Matt has you know described and weaved over the years. So we had to find a way to hit each one of those things and. Um, you know, we did a really good job, but again, that's why there are so many descriptors when you talk about this show, because it's not just one thing. It's not just fantasy. It's not just adults, not just action. There's also really ridiculous comedy and humor and then just a lot of heart behind it all. Yeah. I think some of the most memorable moments in our campaign when we were playing were like the small moments between characters, the little quiet bits of conversation and, and real connection and making sure that we could still capture those and give them the, the chance to breathe and, and really let people fall in love with these characters like we fell in love with them. Uh, and then also amazing, fantastic battle set pieces and wild locations. So it's, it's been a fun, a fun balance to strike and uh, we're, we're real proud of it. How do you choose between the hundreds and hundreds of hours of story and character interactions? Was there a, like a voting process yeah. for some of it? Pretty much, yeah. 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 Really? Like, we really yeah. did. We really did send in like when we started. Like, what are your top moments for your character that you want to see in the show? Things that really yeah. struck home with you and it stuck with us over yeah. the years. Yeah. yeah, I think the first day of the writers' room was basically just the writers interviewing all of us as our characters. Like no real plot development or writing really happened on those early writing room days. It was just us trying to explain our characters and their the impetus behind them and really their wants and their drives so that they really knew what they were getting into. It's kind of a weird circumstance to be able to to go into write for characters and then interview the characters, yeah. mm -hmm. pretty much, yeah. for the series. It's it's been an, it's been an odd path, <laughs> and especially since we all played them for so long, we all knew them so deeply. So we're trying to explain to a room of writers like six years of context, hundreds and hundreds <laughs> of hours. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, ask me a question. Ask me a question. <laughs> 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 Uh, were there things that you forgot about your characters since it's been a little while since you gotten to play them and sure. there's all those years? Yeah, sure. There's there. I mean, uh, like if you look at the the live play show as sort of like the novel that this series has been adapted from. I mean, there's uh, there's hundreds and hundreds of hours of, of playing uh, that we went back and re-listened to mm -hmm. um, to try to gear up to write the series. And, you know, 
a, a lot of it is fantastic. There's moments of crisis and tragedy and, and amazing stuff. But then there's also episodes where we're just customizing our armor. <laughs> or, or just like, buy, oh, we're, we're buying, we're buying a hat. There is a whole episode about shopping. Yeah, now, yeah. Right? There's, a, there's an episode about buying a feather for a hat. <laughs> and so like we knew, we knew we couldn't include those moments in the series. Um, but it was, it was fun to go back and like re-listen to it. Um, and and realize like what a complex and intricate story we accidentally told yeah. through improvisation and RPG uh, gaming, um, and looking back at it, you know we 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 just were just goofing around and and we ended up creating this this storyline that has real payoff and real stakes and real emotion and it's uh, it's it's it was fun to go back and watch and it was real fun to translate to like a scripted show. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's really interesting because the way that you play your game, you have to, even just at the table, you have to be actors and also producers and also writers and sort of like directing things, like especially Matt, you like cutting to different scenes mm -hmm. or like fading to black. Uh, so that in some ways was, do you feel like that helped prep you for actually being in the writer's room? I think so. I mean, yeah, it, there's just an inherent storytelling in, in what we do and plus, you know, it was it was so great to have outside writers come in, give their take on you know the, the entire campaign, the arc of everything, and then let us come in and go. You know what? Let's shape this. Let's tweak this. You know, for the Briarwood arc, which we focus on in the first season, you know, Taliesin obviously had to be very involved in mm -hmm. these villains, the backstory, the complexity of of Percy and and everything in Whitestone and. I mean, you ask Taliesin one question, and he can give you as much oh. information as you need. I'll get going. Yeah. I, I will get going, and I will not stop. Until, this is your panel. Un, until the caffeine you runs out. I mean, that's basically... Are, Taliesin, are you happy with how uh, you, the, the arc that focused on your character came out? I am, and I will also say that there are, there are, there are a lot of perfect moments. There are moments that I have seen on screen where I'm like, that is better than I imagined Ooh. it. Oh. oh my God. That's, that's dark. That's high yeah. that's great. There's and, some dark. Oh, thank you for hitting yeah. the, the dark. And to the point of adaptation too, because the game we play together is always from the perspective of the players. In this format and animation, we get to show different points of view. We get to show sequences with villains and other non, -her you know, hero characters and how they're affected by the story, how they're driving the story. And it's been really fun to explore these things, these moments and interactions that have only been in my head, and I've only been able to talk about it like panels and stuff, and actually bring them to the screen. It's really cool. And we love our villains. Oh, oh. yeah. Yes. Also so. hot. Yeah, yeah. so hot. Yeah, yeah, that's the thing. Like we, we've, said the words, yeah. we've said the words Briarwoods camp, uh, uh, arc a bunch of times, but like the Briarwoods arc is, it's rooted in like uh, there's there's darkness, there's horror to it. Um, I, I I don't know how much I can reveal or not, but like the villains of the Briarwood arc are are gorgeous <laughs> and, and also deeply complex and sophisticated um, with their own goals and and things that drive them and. Um, it's just a really cool uh, way to start the series by by exploring this sort of dark fantasy and horror uh, stuff. It's it's cool. I think we're all a little bit in love with Silas. <laughs> yeah. uh -huh. And yeah. Matt. And and Matt. Matt. By extension. Oh. Yes. <laughs> so you root for him a little bit. Yeah. You're kind of like a good villain is one that you kind of like, and you're like, oh, but... But she's trying so hard. I yeah. just, you know, <laughs> root for them. If you if you could tell the story from a different perspective, they could be the heroes, you know, yeah. depending yeah, on how you right. see it. So that's really good. I think the complexity of that and the gray area that uh, Critical Role lives in makes it just like perfect for an adult animated cartoon. Yeah. Um, we're gonna have to wrap it up what? here soon. No. That's right, I can tell you when to the stop The people of New York now. don't want us to leave. The virtual uh, people want us to keep going. I, <laughs> the people do want you to keep going, but uh, you know. Uh, we, we do, all, all good things come to an end. Very true, yes. very so, true. Damn it, you can't I, argue I that. just have to say, as like having seen you all uh, build this from the ground up, eight years ago. It is incredible. You have literally changed the world. You've gotten together uh, with these people that you love and you've told incredible stories and changed people's lives, mine included. Um, oh, so, so, so honored to be here. Oh, Megan, um, right. Here you guys today. 
And I'm so, so excited for the world to see the legend of Vox Machina. So one more time, let's give it up for Matt oh, Mercy! Hey. Hey. Travis Willingham! Oh, we're doing this. Oh, no. Sam Rago! Yes, it's me. Oh. It's me. I did Marisha. it. Hey. Jeffy! Hey. And Ashley Johnson! <laughs> Thank you so much for joining me, everybody. Any any final any final goodbyes? Any anything to We do people? we do actually have one uh, one cool little thing to drop here oh. at the end of the panel for all the fantastic people who came to join us for this. Uh, you know what? Let's uh let's just go ahead and roll the tape. I don't care about the show. I just want a good blooper reel. I want to learn <laughs> science. <laughs> you guys are going to make me look like I'm in the show, right? You're going to put in the effects. Replace the green. I don't want to look like an asshole here. Sorry. <laughs> <laughs>